Hi everybody, we have completed our geology unit and I want to share with you some of the resources that we used as well as some of the projects that we did. So I want to show you first how we store our units and they're in these open bins that we keep in our school room. Now this is about half the supplies that we have for our geology unit because a lot of the things that we got were quite bulky. So let me show you the things that we liked best first. We really enjoy the Professor Noggins games, and these are really simple card games, and this is the Earth Science version. They have many different versions, and we like them in part because they have two different sets of questions. They have an easy set and a hard set, and what's really great about this is that we like to use the easy set when we're starting out the unit and then move into the harder questions as we finish the unit. Or what you could do is you could ask the kids the easy questions, and then you could do the harder questions just so that you can even out the playing field a little bit. It also has some really nice illustrations on the back of the card. All right, let me show you some of the books that we enjoyed. This one is called A Rock is Lively, and these have really beautiful illustrations, and the content is really good as well. And you could use this anytime. You don't have to use it just for a geology unit. All right, so let me pull out the rest of the books that we used, and tell you what we liked and what we didn't like. The one that we liked the best was this one by Barbara Taylor. It's called Mountains and Volcanoes. And it has really nice illustrations, has just enough content, not too much, not too wordy. It's just really an, a good appropriate amount. And then the, my favorite part of this book is that it comes with a lot of these different hands-on projects and activities that you can do. So we did a number of these throughout our unit. And let me show you one of them right here. This is the fold mountain that we made using construction paper and glue. And we also made a model of the earth using beeswax. And this has the different layers inside. You can't, can't open it now because it's kind of melted together or just kind of blended together. But we had done the core and then the mantle and the crust. All right, some, uh, pretty much the rest of the books were all like, eh, they're kind of mediocre. And it's because none of them were, were really uh, inspiring, I guess. They were just informative and without any follow-up activities, they, they tend to be a little bit dry. This one we did not get to. I had intended to do this one with my ninth grader and we didn't get to doing this one yet because my ninth grader is gonna be doing earth science throughout the entire semester or the entire year, whereas this was just a unit that span about eight or nine weeks with my fifth grader and my kindergartner. So a lot of these books here that we have, rocks and minerals and uh, volcanoes, these are, these are books that you could probably find at the library really easily. They're very informative, they have pictures, but they're not very inspiring. So as we read these books, we would we would read them and then not really retain a whole lot. They're n really nicely written and they have nice illustrations, but they just didn't captivate us the way some other books do. And if you're familiar with the Charlotte Mason philosophy of education, then you'll understand that living books really just kind of captivate you. They're usually written by a single author, who's passionate about a particular subject area, and it's written in a way that is more like a narrative. And these were, were really a bit more dry and informative. This one actually was, was pretty nice. And we had stayed away from our eyewitness books, but this one is a different kind. This is Eyewitness Explorer. And I like this one because it's a little bit similar to the Mountains and Volcano book. And it also comes with some activities. And we just enjoyed this one more than the typical DK eyewitness books. Let me pull those out and show them to you real quick. We have Crystal and Gem and Rocks and Minerals. And usually during our units, we try to have one of these books kind of span the whole unit because they're really informative and they usually have a lot of really nice photographs. But I found them hard to read from cover to cover because they weren't really that inspiring, even though the pictures are really nice to look at. These are the kind of books that you could open up anywhere in the book and read the paragraph and the captions and, and gain some information from it. But we decided not to use them as part of our unit, even though they were in our homeschool room so the kids could browse through them. They were on a little shelf that I 
present our units on but to be honest the kids never picked them up at all or looked through them so they were just pretty decorations that weren't really used but they do have a lot of information so I think they're great as resource books but they didn't make good read aloud books then we have a couple more books here that were again informative but we actually liked this one it's maybe hit or miss with some of these books but we actually enjoyed reading this one and then we have this one on rocks and minerals and this is an, a DKI wonder book and this one we did read aloud cover to cover but we did not find it as inspiring as the mountains and volcanoes books but it was still informative and more enjoyable than some of the other ones that we got now, we also got a lot of books from the library so that my fifth grader could read them to himself as we did the unit. And I don't have those books with me now, but they're similar to what I have already shown you. All right, I wanna show you two more books that my ninth grader used that we picked up from Rainbow Resource. This one is called Let the Rocks Cry Out and it's a Charlotte Mason curriculum. And this one is called the geology book. Now the problem with both these books are that they were religious in nature and we did not know that when we purchased them and because we're with a charter school these books will have to be returned to the vendor because they contain uh, Christian content and so we we did read through this one but this is a workbook and so they will need to be returned but if you were looking for something that did not involve evolution and that had more of, of a religious theme throughout the earth science book then both of these books would be suitable all the books that we use and all the materials that we used are available as a document on my website and you can check the description box below for that information all right let me show you a couple more things that we used here we have lyrical earth science volume one geology this comes with a workbook as well as a sort of like a textbook but it's like a, in a workbook format and my son used this one for his uh geology unit for about like six weeks of his geology unit and then the songs they're really fun and kind of silly and they, obviously they have a geology theme to them so we really like this one and actually this one has a total of four volumes so it has anatomy and it has i think natural science and then one other one that i can't remember right now okay let me show you a couple more books here we have uh, fossils and volcanoes and let me show you the one that has fossils in it and the last one is if you find a rock and again this one was nice to have alongside the rocks that we have found and I just want to point out that when we're or when I'm lesson planning for a unit I will use these full back post-it stickies and I'll put them either on the front or the back of the book or the project that we're going to do and then I'll write a couple of just general bits of information that will help me when I actually get down to lesson planning and putting all this stuff into the computer into our weekly lesson plan but it just kind of gives me a the preliminary way to lesson plan and kind of organize my books and my material and figure out how long things are going to take and who's going to be doing them whether I'm going to read aloud to the kids or whether the kids are going to read to themselves okay in this folder I keep the some of the packaging to the kits that we do that way if we decide to do them again in the future I know which ones to get and let me show you what we actually did as far as these different projects uh, we did and I just showed you the packaging for this one here Oh, I actually took the packaging off <laughs> this is the crystal kit and it was this one and the reason why I still have one of them is that there were three different kinds and I had purchased all three different kinds because I thought all three of my kids were going to do this project but only two of them did it and this is what they did they were able to excavate these gems from this kit and then it came with like this nice display kit 
case. We also were able to grow crystals. This kit came with the materials to grow crystals and those didn't actually work out as well as we thought. Okay, we had a number of these rock kits that we used as well. We had these on display. The kids could look through them and examine them and try to identify them. We also had one specifically for sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks. And this was nice because it was already separated into the different types of rocks. And so that was nice to have. And it also came with these little magnifying glasses and they were all numbered and then you could refer to the key to find out what they were. The only thing is is that these numbers that it comes off pretty easily so if you got a kit like this I would recommend taking a picture of it first just in case you lose the numbers that way you could always I'd be able to identify what came in these different rock kits. So we really enjoyed having these on hand. We didn't use these specifically in our lessons, but they were available for the kids to look at. Another kit that we really enjoyed, I really enjoyed looking through this one, it's the fossil collection kit. And we'll use this one again when we do our dinosaur and fossil unit. And these ones come with different fossils and they were a lot of fun to look at. And I want to point out one that we actually found on our own. I don't remember what this one is called, but we got this fossil when we went on a fossil dig in Texas. I believe the place was Mineral Wells and it was just full of fossils. It was really thrilling to discover our own. And there were multiple different kinds available at that site. We've also been to Utah to the U dig. Um, site, fossil excavation site, and they have trilobites there. And that was a lot of fun, but it's been years since we went there. So in addition to those kits, we also did our own excavation kits. And this one was from one that had the different layers. It was an excavation kit that showed the different layers of the earth. And then where you would find these different rocks, whether they were like sedimentary rocks on the mountain or metamorphic rocks under the, under the ground. And then we did another excavation kit where you excavate a little volcano and then you, you discover different igneous rocks and you can find six out of a possible 12 different uh, possible <laughs> rocks that you could find. And we decided to just, this one didn't come with anything. So we decided, we made this display. We decided to glue them on and make our own display so that we could have them. Otherwise they'll just get lost in the mix of everything. And then on the back, I just put in a little envelope what the kit was that we did. And also it has more information on, on the rocks. And so I just kept that there. Uh, it was an, it was an easy, nice place to keep. And then this is just hanging in our school room. There's one kit that we didn't get to that I kind of wish we were able to at least do one or two of these projects. This is called Rocks and Minerals. This is the TOPS learning system and it comes with an activity book and then it comes with the materials to do the different projects. Now this was hand-me-down from a friend but I'm pretty sure that all the material was here. We just didn't get a chance to do this one. We also have this fold uh, flip chart and it's earth science and it's really really nice this would be a great addition to any classroom and it's nice and laminated and we had this on display in our school room while we were doing this unit but we never actually got around to using it and reading through it and so I kind of wish that we had incorporated this into our lesson plan a little bit better rather than it just being classroom decoration but the flip chart also came with some worksheets that went along with the different charts and I just photocopied one of these one day when we needed a sample to turn in to our teacher for school and this was kind of nice to have since it coordinated with our unit study as well as the flip chart. We had more classroom decoration as well. This is the rock cycle and it shows the whole rock cycle and this was this is really nice to have and then we also had this one here that also shows 
uh, information on rocks. Now, this I keep a lot of our posters in here. We have them on astronomy and history and science and well, they're all backwards there. But anyway, um, so we'll pull some of these out. We'll either put it on the bulletin board or we'll hang it on the door where I've got a couple of clips where we can hang posters like this. And speaking of posters, we got this one from this kit here. It's called All About Volcanoes. And I picked up this kit from Tuesday morning for like $4. It was such a great kit. It was, it's worth it at full price. And you assemble, or actually you first you paint and then you assemble these different volcanoes. And then it comes with the little plastic mechanism to make them erupt and this was a lot of fun to do and what was really great about this particular kit was that it came with this booklet and it has a lot of information and we use this extensively when we made our geology lap book which was the final project that we did in this unit and it really kind of brought together a lot of the stuff that we had learned and this one was it, it took like the entire unit because we had intended to do this like throughout a little bit you know in the first week and in the second week and I thought it'd be done by the third week and we didn't finish it until just recently and we have just started our next unit so this one was a lot of fun to do we used information from uh, many of the books that we used during our unit in order to make this so overall, I have to say that only a couple of the books that we used, we really enjoyed. The rest of them are really informative and they probably would have been better for me to read them on my own and use them as resources rather than to read them aloud or to assign them to my child because he also read probably 40 books on his own during this unit. And really the information goes in one ear and out the other. And so it's really a project like this that really brings that information home. So had we just skipped a lot of those extra books and just done more projects like projects like this, I think we probably would have been better off. But overall, all the hands-on projects that we did in the kits were a lot of fun and we really enjoyed them a lot. So I hope you enjoyed this review of our geology material that we used for this unit. And don't forget that you can check out a lot of our projects on a daily basis by finding me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine and you can see the complete playlist of all of our geology projects by clicking right here.